Okay. So I'll pause that. And let's let's start reading, I guess. I'm gonna read this. Which you can't see my cursor, but I'm gonna read this. But we're not watching the video because I don't want to. And that's that's the end of that story. <coughs> I'm going to read all the Lesson 1 stuff, and then I'll switch it back to my camera and show you what I'm doing with the pens. That'll be fun. Okay, let's start. Lesson 0, Getting Started. Introduction. Drawbox started out as being completely text only, which made things admittedly difficult to absorb, especially considering just how much information there is to share. These days, I try to convey what I can in video form alongside a much more detailed written lesson. But while the videos do cover the major points, I still strongly encourage you to go through both. Not only is there information that will be better suited to either video or text format, but there's also only so much that can be compressed into a single video. Furthermore, and perhaps most importantly, you'll find yourself understanding the information better if you receive it a number of in a number of different formats, and if you rewatch and reread them frequently. This video is mostly going to explain the points I mention on the next pages of this lesson. They may seem like superfluous, unimportant points, but they are critical to understanding what Drawbox is for and how it's meant to be used to be most effective for you. Watch the video. I'm a shed. I'm making you do a lot of work. <sighs> okay, I'll just click on the next one about drop. Oh, oh, what is that? What is that? That little ad. I really should have left the cursor on. I wonder if I can fix that. I'll fix it later. Okay. <laughs> There's a little tengu. Yeah, okay. Uh, about Drawbox. This page explores what was covered in the intro video from the last page in greater detail. We did not watch that. <laughs> what is Drawbox all about? There are plenty of drawing tutorials and lessons all across the internet, and many of them are free, or at least pretty cheap. But one thing they tend to have in common is that they appeal to a beginner's desire to create something pretty right now. In doing so, they'll breeze past the fundamentals, something sometimes giving them a light touch and often skipping them altogether in favor of getting to the good stuff. Them, them, them big anime booties. After all, those beginners can just learn their fundamentals elsewhere, right? Right? Guys? Guys? Eat. You know how to do stuff already, right? You know what you know what pen is? Do you know letters? Writing instruments? Anyways. Learning the fundamentals on the internet, at least for free, is actually surprisingly challenging. The information is strewn about, and a lot of people have different ideas of what the fundamentals are. Many of the resources that do exist also tend to take a path similar to most fine arts-oriented schools focus heavily on... Just draw what you see and keep doing it until it clicks on my ads. Drawbox is my attempt at providing the information beginners need before they dig into the fun stuff, rather than providing flashy, look what you'll draw in 10 easy steps so your money back, except it's free, click our ads, da, 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 promises. It's about introducing you to solid, proven exercises that work, given patience and determination. With some cases, for example, 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 cam camels. Uh, learning the ghosting method covered in lesson one, simply changing how one approaches and thinks about what they're doing will yield immediate results. Practice and mileage will always be an important component, however, and your success will rest heavily on your willingness to push through, to accept, and to value the many failures you'll experience along the way, rather than fearing or hating them. At its core, what Drawbox is meant to teach can be summarized in a few points. 
conscientiousness. That's a $5 word. So patience to plan, prepare, and think through each mark you put down. Confidence, the willingness to push forwards without hesitation once your preparations are complete. Spatial awareness, not just an understanding of the forms you're drawing as they exist in 3D space, but an actual belief in the illusion that you are crafting. We're all going to become witches. That you're not simply drawing lines on a flat page, but rather than creating actual solid masses in a three-dimensional world. Construction. The ability to see the complex or objects around you, break them down into their simplest components, and use them to recreate them in your drawing, building up from their simplest core elements and gradually breaking them down to greater levels of complexity. And visual communication. The skills required to take the ideas you have and convey them clearly and directly to an audience. Drawbox is about learning how to get started on this journey of yours. I'm not promising you mastery in any of these areas, but rather equipping you with what you need to start trundling down that dirt road in the right direction. <sighs> Sorry. How should Drawbox be used? Correctly. No, no one's using it correctly. They're all doing it wrong. We're all wrong. We're all submitting homework too early and we're doing it with like Google images. To keep it short and street, sweet, follow the instructions exactly as they are written. Don't sit there and grind and exercise until it's perfect. Pace yourself. This is not a race and right now speed is not a concern. Don't work in a vacuum. Get others' eyes on your work. Sluggy, how dare. Don't interpret or alter the exercises as you see fit. See this? See this? Nobody. It's, yeah. I watch him do critiques, and y'all sometimes don't listen. Or immediately walk in, kick down the door, and they say, where's the shortcut to the bathroom? Because I'm full of crap. Anyways, many of the exercises here are, by their very nature, bland and uninteresting. They're also quite effective at building towards very specific goals. If you alter the exercises to make them more interesting while you're busy being entertained by your work, you'll also be more likely to miss the point of the exercise altogether or at least diminish its effectiveness. Do not rush. A lot of beginners will come in asking, how long should I take? Or am I going too slow? I've been here for five minutes and I haven't seen any results. What's what what in the heck? And it's not even heck with a C, it's H E K. Heck heck heck. Because they're just impatient. We don't have time for consonants. Um You take as long you take exactly as long as you need to in order to complete the work to the best of your current ability. If that takes a week, a month, a year, it doesn't matter. Don't be afraid to take breaks either. If you catch yourself feeling tired or bored, it's better to give yourself a rest rather than accepting the sloppiness that will follow. Your stamina, just like everything else, is something that will grow with time. You may not be able to sit and focus for more than half an hour right now, but you'll be able to go for hours in the future. Each exercise comes with a recommended number of pages. That's not a minimum, and you're not expected to do more than that as part of the lesson's homework. That's the number of pages you should expect to do for now. While doing them, strive to make efficient use of the page. Don't draw three lines in the center and call it done. Fill as much of it as you can while putting the time and effort in to do it to the best of your current ability. That said, know that once those pages are full, you can and should move on. The goal isn't to master each exercise on your own. It's to create a body of work that consists of the best of what you can do at this moment. So someone else can then take a look and point out any major areas where you're misunderstanding important concepts, something that is extremely difficult to do on your own. Once you've completed the lesson and moved on, you'll still be expected to incorporate those lessons into a regular warm-up routine. Please pick two or three exercises at the beginning of each sitting from all the exercises you've learned just thus far and do them for 10 to 15 minutes. That'll allow you to continue honing those specific skills without impeding your ability to move forward. You gotta never, never stop doing it. Ever, ever, ever. Ever, 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 ever. Eh. Who is Drawbox for? 
the lessons here were written for two distinct groups in mind. Complete and total beginners. These fresh-faced newbies are great because they come in without much in the way of preconceptions or arrogance and are much more likely to follow instructions to the letter as they are meant to be and therefore absorb the information as intended. Their inexperience is in many ways a considerable advantage being a clean slate as they are. It's like uh, it's like when you're working in construction and you hire the fresh face boys and you can train them to do things the way you want and then in comes, you know, 45-year-old grumpy ass Steve and he's all like, hey, back of my shirt, we did things this way and it was great and only three people died. And you're just like, dude, 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 you do things this way, no one dies except it's boxes. <laughs> Uh, self-taught amateurs. I don't say amateur to be rude. It's simply the most accurate term to describe someone who's got experience under their belt but is still finding their way. Having been one myself when I was introduced to the concepts I present here, I actually started out hoping to help those who'd be l largely self-taught and unstructured in their approach to learning. Such students tend to have some of their fundamentals sorted out, but there tends to be plenty of holes and inconsistencies there. This requires them to unlearn habits and fill things in as they go, and they end up fighting a great deal against what they think, what they already think they know. Blech. While this results in a great deal of struggling near the beginning, it usually results in somewhat more rapid improvement as well. Oh my gosh, this boy is wordy. Ugh. All in all, everyone would benefit benefit from going back to the basics and refining. I'm pretty sure it's recording. Oh my gosh. If you think I can't oppress you, Sven, you're wrong. Oh, on OBS? I don't know. Oh, you know what? It's not recording. Should I start recording it now? Should I do that now? It just says streaming on. Okay, I'm going to start it right now. I don't, what, do, what am I even going to do with this recording? Yeah, it doesn't matter. There's probably a way to, like, download and mush the Twitch recording and with this, what do we call this, local recording? It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. We can always just, you know, first episode have a cut to pre-rule That'll That'll confuse people. We'll be like Dragon Ball Z. We don't have to make sense. Okay. Uh, I'll just read these last two paragraphs over again. I don't remember where I was before I was rudely interrupted. <clears throat> all in all, everyone would benefit from getting back to basics and refining their ability to capture the illusion of solid form and weight. But these two groups are the main ones I'm looking to help. What matters most is that if you've decided to follow these lessons, it means you've put a certain degree of trust in the approach covered here. So as long as you hold enough trust in the source to continue following it, then do so it's in, in its entirety. Don't half-ass it. Three quarters of an ass it. And then leave one quarter for other activities, like gambling, or sharpening switchblades, or cross-stitch. Okay. Now we move on to the critical warning. <sighs> Nobody told me I'd be reading an entire thesis. You know what I did the first time I did Drawbox? I just skipped all this. I just skipped all this and went straight to the homework and started making lines on whatever paper I could find, like printer paper or, or graph paper or a piece of cardboard I found behind a shed, some walls outside a children's hospital. Whatever, whatever worked. I just, I just did. I just made lines, like a terrible graffiti. I'm, I'm kidding. Okay. Anyway, so a critical warning: drawing for fun is mandatory. Fun is mandatory. Fun is mandatory. Okay. There's something I've found myself having to say a great deal over the last few years. So at this point, I think it's critical that I state it here and equally critical that you understand. As such, I've separated this out into its own page to give you the best chance of actually reading this. Nobody reads Lesson Zero. I've spent enough time just stalking the chat to know that none of you 
a reading lesson zero. You just go in in the lesson one, and then you come in, and then you ask, how long until I can do stuff that's cool? Or how long until I, I can, when do I draw for fun? I don't know what to do. I'm drowning in boxes and ellipses, and I'm just so lost. And then someone like Kipsy comes in and is like, you read lesson zero? I don't understand. They're like, what? What? New? I just went to the part with the pictures. I started copying them. Readings for nerds. All right. Um, you should not be devoting every moment you spend drawing to your growth as an artist. Too many students think that the only way you'll get good is if you do nothing but practice. And they feel that any time spent drawing but not doing exercises is time wasted. This is simply not true. And more than that, it's extremely harmful. I recommend that of all the time you spend drawing, you only spend half of that on improving. However that may be. Whether it's working through Drawbox, some courses, or even just doing structured studies of your own. The other half should be dedicated to drawing for the sake of drawing. You've likely gone into this endeavor for a reason, and unless you pursue that goal throughout, you risk losing grip on it. That means trying to draw those characters, vehicles, props, clothing, cultures, worlds you love now, whether you feel you're ready or not. And no, you won't be ready at first, and you won't be ready for a long time. But it doesn't matter. Sure, if you grind your studies every moment you can spare and you somehow manage not to burn out along the way, you'll come out with considerable technical skill, but you'll also have no idea how to apply it. And as many will tell you, facing that reality and overcoming it is perhaps more difficult than learning to draw in the first place. I got I got tons of goblin voices for all the students, so that'll be fun. Oh, tools of the trade. Oh, look at these. Look at these. Okay. You should really update this picture and just like crappily Photoshop in the draw box pens, just like right, right, right above the Stedler one. <laughs> just, just take, just take like one of the product photos and then like, you know, use the, 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 what's it called? The marquee tool and just paste it on there. At its core, draw box consists of seven lessons. There have been others, and there will be others in the future, but when you think Drawbox, you're thinking of Lessons 1 through 7. He's talking about the figure section. It's gone. It's hiding. You'll never find it. I saw it once in a dream. Anyways. Ugh. While the other lessons have had other recommended tools, ranging from some French stuff, pencils, to digital media, the core seven lessons should be done with ink. Specifically a style of pen known as fine liner, spell tips, or technical pens. Basically, as you can see in the image above, their tips have metal barrels with a felt nib. I'm not here to try and teach you how to draw with ink. Thank goodness for that, as I'm a digital artist myself. I have chosen these kinds of pens, however, because they complement the lesson material and the concept being covered. And you're more than any and more than anything, they help encourage the kind of habits and respect for your line work that goes hand in hand with everything else I'm trying to teach. I explain this in greater detail in this article, Why Ink? When I actually found the um Drawbox site the first time the figure drawing lesson was still up and I went through it and I was like all, all I did was look at the pictures I'll admit that's just what I did I just looked at the pictures I might have read some footnotes if they were there and it's like I'll be the picture can't be in the picture this will make me very good drawing if I just copy this picture it didn't work <sighs> yeah that was way before I even spoke one lewd word to him <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I, I don't even remember what year it would have been it would have been like a year or two before I think I'm not entirely sure uh, but it was there and then it disappeared but I kind of forgot all about it so yeah. and now I'm in his house touching his stuff I'm gonna touch his stuff I, actually I did, I did have to dig through your desk drawers to find the um, box of pens because you didn't leave them out for me. You left. We we had the box of the um, other pens for the thing that we're gonna do. There. You only have two drawers. Where else am I gonna look? Anyways, <clears throat> back 
to the reading. They do that by producing a rich, dark line, regardless of how much pressure you apply. Their only dimension of variance is in the weight of the stroke. The 0.5 size for most brands is ideal, as it allows for a great range of weights. I do not want you to use different pens in the same drawing. Don't go drawing with a 0.3 and then going over it with a 0.5 or anything like that. You can tell you'll get in trouble. Ideally, if you can, pick up the 0.5s in bulk. Aside from that, the brands I've used include Stedler Pigment Liners and Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. Their sizing is different. F is, equivalent, is the equivalent to 0.5, but you're not limited to these. There are many other brands ranging from the Copic Multiliners to Sakura Microns and hell even Sharpies. The Ultra Fines and the Sharpie Pens will do. Don't, don't use a fat, normal Sharpie. <clears throat> Just make sure that when you're drawing with these that you're not applying too much pressure. Students have a tendency to damage their pens this way, which reduces the flow of ink and forces one to draw with the pen held at a higher angle to achieve the same rich marks. Most think that their pens have just died, but these things can actually these things yeah, okay. These things can actually last for a good while, even with all the drawing that we do for these lessons. That said, do expect to end up buying quite a few if you're in for the long haul. From lesson one to seven, pens can get a little pricey, so find a brand with a price point and quality balance that works for you. And oh boy, look at that! It's an ad for Dropbox pens! Oh, I bet they're good! I bet they do the job real good, like! Okay, anyway. Um, so yeah, Dropbox pens. Go buy some. How many packs are there left? Like, not many right now? I know, there, I, know, I know they did, I know Sven did like a reorder, but I don't think there's very many left in stock right now because y'all thirsty for that ink. <clears throat> paper. All I ask is that you don't draw on lined paper or like napkins. In fact, above all else, I highly recommend that you use regular printer paper. It's a great size, A4 or eight and a half by 11, and will allow plenty of room to think through spatial problems. As you get smaller and more cramped, this can be a problem. It's not going to fold back over while you're drawing like a sketchbook might, and it's not going to leave you feeling afraid of ruining a sketchbook. If you insist on using something fancier, try not to go too small, and if it's a sketchbook, ringed is better as it lets you fold the pages back and get them out of the way. So yeah. I swear, when I was creeping behind Arshad's shoulder the other day, somebody had submitted some homework on regular lined paper, and you should have heard the noise he made. It was not a good one. Um, other tools. Certain lessons and exercises will require other tools as well, ranging from simple rulers, generally you can use any sort of straight edge, to ellipse guides and French curves in lessons six and seven. Lips guides templates come in sets and can get expensive, but you can usually shop around online and find them for cheaper on places like eBay. They are extremely useful. However, I would not recommend you buy them until you've actually reached those lessons. Once you do, they are a sound investment. Because I was but a poor white girl in Florida, I would just fold a piece of um, printer paper over two times to make a straight edge and I would use that to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I would use that to grade my boxes or draw a straight line whenever I needed it. I might have had a ruler, but I definitely could never find it. <laughs> Formal request for recreation of the noise or shedding. Oh, there's like a there's a there's a wide range of sounds that creates the symphony that is Urshad doing critiques. I could not hope to recreate it accurately. <laughs> so I recommend you just start dating him, move into his house, and sit about five feet away from him while he's doing critiques if you want to hear those sounds. <laughs> 